welcome to Meet the Musician. Today we are meeting Neil Tolbert from America. Neil, if I ask you first of all, just to introduce yourself, tell us where you are. Well, I'm Neil Tolbert and I am a musician in South Texas. Um, you could find San Antonio, Houston, and Corpus Christi, some of the bigger cities in Texas. Point smack dab in the middle of, of all three of those. And that's about where I'm located. And just excited to be here on this, uh, this interview process. Your stage name when you're performing? It's just Neil Tolbert, yes. Great. Right. It okay. used to be Neil's Acoustic Journey, but I, I switched over a few years, or about a year ago, to, to just encompass my actual name. What first ignited your interest in music? Oh, I've always been around music from from little on. Uh, my father is a, a trumpet player. And my mother was highly involved in choir and other things uh, through our local church. And my grandparents, they were big musical activists as well. I believe my grandmother received her first xylophone probably in the early 1920s. And uh, my grandfather was an avid uh, accordion player. So, so music's been around my life from day one. You're from a very musical family. Was there a lot of karaoke? Um, did everyone like to sing or was it more instruments? Not so much karaoke, but for, for holidays, we would sing traditional, um, traditional Christmas songs and from uh, my mother's side of the family it's the, the origins are heavily geared towards German culture so so there were a few German hymns that we would sing. Did you have instrument lessons when you were growing up? Well I had always been interested in, in playing guitar. Uh, I had written music as early as 10 or 11 years old, I, I just enjoyed writing. And uh, when I was 16, I had the fortune of this intern pastor that came to our church and he offered free guitar lessons. And through that, I was able to learn within the church and, and started playing gospel hymns and things of that nature. And it just piqued my interest in from then on, I've just been running with it as far as playing the guitar and singing. And over time, you build the confidence to, to sing in front of people. And, and once that stage was set, then it's, it's been nothing but a pleasure from day one. When did you realize that you had a good voice and that you were able to sing and potentially go and do that in, in public and on stage and so on? Well, I don't know. I, I think it was, and it's, it's still a... Uh, confidence building thing it is uh i've always liked to sing but i don't know if i ever had just one point where i recognized that that i was pretty decent at it uh but over time i've i've tried to uh tweak it and develop it further to, to make it sound better you also mentioned earlier that you started writing your own songs um i know on your set with us at facebook live lockdown gigs when I was listening to the set, there was one particular song that really stood out. Because I often listen to the sets and I try and, especially on a, a Saturday when there's like eight hours straight, I have to do other stuff. So I'm pottering about with the music on in the background and there was one song that really struck me straight away. One of your originals and I've used another one of your tracks for one of our promo videos. So glad you mentioned that because some of your original tracks are really, really good. What's your inspiration when you kind of write a track? Uh, a lot of it revolves around family and love and, and positivity. There are a few other things that, that have been written based on perhaps a friend's perspective or a friend's trouble uh, that's been brought in. But a lot of it is through life experience, positivity, love, and family. That's pretty much what it's all geared towards. Great. I think that comes out quite strongly in your songs. Who were your inspirations growing up? Uh, 
definitely my family plays a huge factor, as I had mentioned, as far as uh, falling in love with music. Uh, but as far as outside artists, it, it, it's kind of a broad spectrum. I've uh, listened to John Denver and Simon and Garfunkel. And I've, I've just tried to embrace musicians from, from every decade and every facet. Uh, every genre. Uh, more recent artists that have a big influence on me are like Jack Johnson, uh, Jason Mraz, Rob Thomas, uh, Lincoln Durham, who's an actor here in the United States, real soulful, uh, kind of Southern rock. Uh, it's just kind of all over the place and I've tried to piece everything together uh, based on those influences. So with all those different musicians and styles, how would you describe your own style of music? I would say it's concentrated on singer songwriter, folk, maybe a little folk rock, uh, maybe a little Americana mixed in too. I like to throw in a few questions that maybe are a little bit random or unexpected. Sure. So, First one I'm going to ask, have you been interviewed before, not including a job interview? Or is this the first time? Uh, yes, uh, by a local paper a few times uh, for music. And, and also I coach tennis. So, so from time to time, an article on that. So I'm going to throw this at you. You've had sure. no time to think about this or prepare an answer. If you were a fruit, All right, throw it at me. what fruit would you be and why? Oh, gosh. Good gosh. Yeah, I, I think I'd like to be a watermelon. Because they come out in the summertime. I like I like summertime. And uh, they're cool. <laughs> <laughs> they're refreshing. So I'd go with a watermelon. Okay, watermelon, great. Is music your main job or do you have another job? No, my full-time job is is teaching and instructing. And then coaching is, is tied to that as well, as all our sports are, are tied to the, to the school system. So what would be a normal day for you when you've got, let's say, a gig? How do you prepare? What sort of things does Neil Tolbert do on a gig day? Uh, if it's a Friday, I'm coming home from work and I'm loading my equipment and going straight to the gig. Because it's time. Uh, there's very limited time. take care of the family real quick and and head to the location yeah on a saturday i may get some time to uh, pull out the guitar a little bit and practice a little bit over uh, unfamiliar tracks that i may be introducing for the first time how do you balance your music with other obligations for instance friends partner children job yeah i, I try to include the family as much as possible there, there are times that they'll come out and uh, show their support uh, daughters do like to sing so at times we we play around and, and mess around with music in the house what is the best advice you've been given i do have some uh negative advice that was given once that uh basically around this area texas country is rather popular it is the dominant genre in the area and so are uh, cover bands that strictly play covers so this gentleman that that booked me one time years back this is probably in 2007 uh, he had mentioned and I quote that you should not focus on original music the money is where the covers are so you need to learn cover music, and that's how you'll survive in this area. And luckily, I've been able to, to balance both. I play a, a few covers, but I'm still able to introduce my own style, my own original music. What do you consider to be the best song that you've written? I don't know. There's a lot of uh, meaningful content. I am uh, currently finishing one that probably will... Uh, be the most meaningful because uh, my wife and I lost a child last year. Uh, she had trisomy 18, a genetic condition 
that uh, duplicated her 18th chromosome, and we we're fortunate to have her for three hours. So I am complete, currently completing a song uh, based on those raw emotions, based on the uh, the feeling of not being able to experience her yeah. in, in this life. So okay, so that's probably going to be that's probably going to steal the cake. But the oh, the yeah. other ones, there it, it would be hard to pick a second one. What about if I asked you what's your favorite song to perform live? Well, uh, as far as originals, probably Are You Afraid of Flying? I like that one because it's got a little bit of harmonica. It's a fast pace. Uh, Mighty Good Torn Vans, another original that I like playing live just because it's from a Vans perspective on the road with the band. Uh, as far as covers, I love 90s music, so there's a few 90s covers that I really enjoy playing. Uh, Goo Goo Dolls Slide. Uh, Radiohead Creep. If you could collaborate with any musician alive today, who would you want to collaborate with and why? That's a tough one. Johnny Cash would be a solid pick, especially in his older years, the, the darker content that, that he was writing. It'd be fun to work with him. Hey, what is the biggest stage you performed on or the biggest crowd you performed to? Uh, there was... One experience that I had, I opened for a now pretty famous Texan, uh, Texas country musician by the name of Bree Bagwell. I, I'm not sure exactly how I got the gig, but it, it worked out to my benefit at a, a bar in a uh, town that's about 30 miles from here, a town of about 80,000. As she was touring through, they needed someone to open, and, and I filled that position, and that place was, was pretty packed. I don't, I don't know the total number, uh, but it was to its fullest limit. Yeah. How did that feel? That was pretty exciting. Yeah, that was, it was different. I don't know if my music really matched up with, with what she was putting forth, but uh, as, as far as uh, the same genre, but, but it was a neat experience. Do you get nerves when you perform? Not anymore. Years back, yes, but now it's done so many that, that those nerves are pretty much gone. Unless it's, uh, I'd say, the on the contrary, if it's in a new environment that I've never played before and you can kind of sense what the crowd is looking for, and if you, if you don't feel like you feel, fit that mindset, or sometimes you do 20 minutes into it, and then it's, and it's all fine. But you can kind of sense what they're looking for. And if you're not it, you can pick up on that right away. And if you make a mistake during your set, what do you do? How do you handle it? Do you hide it? Do you laugh it off? I, I try, to, try to hide it, and sometimes I'll, I'll laugh a little bit miss some words or miss a chord and just go to the next one and, and keep on strumming it's a funny one because i think usually people that are watching don't don't notice the mistake unless the the singer sort of highlights it right right we're our worst critics yeah why did you get involved in facebook live lockdown gigs and what do you think of the platform well i i first saw that that my friend zachary grant was involved in it and and that's when I, I kind of reached out because uh, it seemed like just such an innovative, cool idea. We had done something on a local level, a little bit similar, a few weeks before in our first week of COVID lockdown where we just had uh, musicians from this area help and support each other and share our live feeds. Uh, but, but this was a new environment and it could reach out to the different people and then also on the listening aspect you get to hear different artists from from all over i think that's genuine and cool you might not be able to answer this one this one's some of these questions that i ask i wouldn't be able to answer but i'll throw them in anyway just in case so okay what is the most useless talent you have 
Oh man, I can uh, birth the ABCs. <laughs> you can have to demo that. I don't now. think I've ever used that to my benefit. Let's let's give it a shot. Oh, I used to be better at this. That was pretty good though. Okay. That was pretty uh, good. I got to H. Yeah, we'll take that. Do you sing in the shower? Uh, not so much. Back in my bachelor days, probably a little bit more. Not so much anymore. It's a little awkward now. I don't know. Sometimes I still do. What about in the car? Just to be annoying. In the car, yes. What do you normally sing in the car? Oh, if, if I'm by myself, it's uh, some 90s music, usually. What's the most trouble you've ever gotten into? I don't know, really. I, not Nothing that's really horrific. I have got a few traffic, traffic tickets and stuff. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's Good the extent man. of it. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> what are your fondest musical memories? Well, I've been in a, a few bands when I was uh, younger, and we we just had some great times playing together with friends and and having that and sharing that bond and relationship with other musicians. There's something about four or five musicians all playing different instruments and it just clicking together. It's it's different, and right. it, it build long lasting, lifetime friendships with with those musicians. Yeah. So earlier, I asked you what the best advice you've received was, and you told me the worst advice you've received. So oh, yeah, this time I'm going to ask you if someone wanted to be a musician, wanted to be a singer, a guitarist, someone maybe growing up, what's the best advice you could give them? Don't let barriers hinder your desire and passion to succeed in the music business. Uh, and do it for you. Don't do it for anyone else. Write songs for you. Write songs that have meaningful content, that carry weight, that, that represent you and who you are. Don't try to appeal to the masses or or any other thing when i speak to musicians there's certain musicians that i've spoken to who have pretty strange sleeping habits now <laughs> probably those aren't people that have got a day job teaching what are your sleeping patterns like do you get to bed at a reasonable time or are you up all different hours well with the uh, the current situation sleeping patterns have been a little off with uh, being home and teaching from online, you sleep in a little longer and stay up a little later. Uh, but for the most part, it, when we're in full session during a normal school year, it is staying up till 10.30 p.m.-ish and waking up at 5.30. What's your favorite series or program on TV? I just finished Daredevil. <laughs> on Netflix and I'm moving into the Punisher and I'll go from there. But I started Daredevil when it first came out and watched the first two seasons and then I've never really had time to sit down and finish the third. And unfortunately it, they kind of lost their contract to continue with that series and it leaves on a on a cliffhanger at the end of season three. What's next for Neil Tolbert? I uh, continue writing and playing, and hopefully by this summer we'll have enough content to to produce an album. Right now I'm sitting at about five songs. Where do you record your songs? Uh, I do it all myself. Uh, that's kind of a hobby of mine to, to mess with the recording equipment. Uh, so, yeah, everything's self-produced, and um, it's recorded in, in different layers, so do an instrument one layer and then come in with another instrument the next layer and just build it from there so obviously i've seen you on the live i've seen or heard some of your some of your original tracks i think you're brilliant what oh thank you pleasure what about the viewers if they haven't heard your music why should the viewers follow your social media and track your music and start to engage with what you're doing well, I, I think you can find positivity in it if uh, you're looking 
for meaningful content and meaning, meaningful lyrics. I think I got a little bit of something for for each and every person that, that could fit their mind frame. So, uh, yeah, I think I think that would be the big appeal, be uh, the lyrical content. And as I always say on these interviews, it makes such a big difference to the musicians if you do follow and subscribe because it's pretty difficult to get followers and subscribers and it's only a Correct. click for you so if the viewers want to do that where can they find you well i'm on facebook neil tolbert music uh i do have reverb nation where the majority of my musical content is located that's uh reverbnation.com slash neil tolbert music and i also have soundcloud uh, you just search Neil Tolbert Music and you'll be able to find it there. I've started to reconstruct a YouTube channel. So hopefully new content will be uh, coming to that soon. And you can find that by searching Neil Tolbert Music as well. So uh, I'm trying to think. I, I'm not on Twitter too much. Mm -hmm. uh, the majority of the information that I'm throwing out on social media is on facebook and then oh yeah instagram at uh neil tolbert music when we release this video we will we will link as many of those as possible with the video okay thank you what's your best joke best joke golly why does uh snoop dogg use an umbrella i don't know for the drizzle <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got there in the end, you found one. Good. Yeah. Good sport. Thank you. O oldie but goodie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, before we finish, is there anything else you'd like to say? I hope everyone stays safe and continues to support local businesses, local musicians. Um, we're all kind of thrown into this together and we we have to work our way out of it slowly but surely while continuing to pick each other up as we go along and this uh interview is in association with youtube channel 24 carat goose they also have a facebook page and an instagram page as well as okay. facebook live lockdown gigs thank you neil thank you everyone for joining us and until hey i just want to say on. just want to say thank you for everything you're doing to to support music from all over the globe i mean this is this is awesome uh, you, you've worked tirelessly to to build these lineups and and interviews and uh, it's well organized easy to follow and uh it's providing great exposure for for all sorts of individuals so thank you thank Real you pleasure. it's lovely having acts such as yourself and we've had Australians, Philippines, Thailand, a lot of different places. It's made it even better. So thank you. And thank you everyone for watching. And until next time, take care. Goodbye. We'll see you later.